it's Andy Mandy, and this week's episode is going to be Steps for Embellishment Projects, a 101 guide. So, um, there are a lot of people who have gone out and done all the little videos for how to do all these stitches. I'm going to be doing more of an overview, so, uh, continuation of kind of tools and supplies, what other things, like tips and tricks, uh, how to go about doing your designs, choosing them and putting them on your canvas so that you can start your projects and just um, helping you to understand like say you get one of these and it's got like a stitch that isn't covered in a video that you've ever seen I'm going to be showing you how to understand those stitches alright so first off tools and supplies so if you want to know the basic supplies uh, I will put the link below to the video I did from last week and uh, another thing that you want is to make sure that your hands are all like really moisturized because if your hands are really dry, the f like the pores on your skin start sticking up and they get hard and they just start scraping your fabric. Not like it depends on how dry your hands are, of course, but also make sure to trim your nails and to use like an emery board to uh, make sure that there's no sharp edges that are going to puck your fabric or pull any threads and just damage your product or uh, project. Um, if you're a beginner, some of the fabrics you might want to choose, even though fabrics like of any kind will go, um, you might want to start out with a cotton, a cotton blend, a linen, or a muslin. A muslin is actually an unbleached cotton. It hasn't been finished or treated in any way. Um, and whatever fabric you're using, make sure to pre-wash and dry it. Depend, like, um, do your research and understand what the care is because some may require hand washing or something like that. But um, because say like cotton is really really bad for shrinking so you want to make sure that you put it in the washer and a dryer so that way it's already shrunk before you start your project. Because if you have your project and you've already finished some beading or embroidered or sequenced or whatever you've done to your fabric and it gets dirty or you need to wash it. Um, it's going to go shrink and everything's just going to pucker and you just really don't want that. So just get that out of the way. Um, you don't actually have to put it in a washer or dryer. I know you can also do it by hand. Like take a big tub, make sure it's all clean. Um, fill it up with some hot water and some laundry detergent and just occasionally spin it around, let it rest, spin um, with like a big spoon or something like that and then hang it up to dry or you can lay it on a table and towel dry it. Depending on how wet it is, if you bother to wring it out, um, you may need a lot of towels. So I've done that in the past. So what you want to do is, if you're doing a canvas, you want to take your piece of fabric, lay it out, and you want to trace the edges of your canvas size, whatever size it is, large, small, medium. And then you want to give yourself, say, two inches would be really good. Um, you can go as far as three depending um, on how your frame that you're going to be using. Say it's like one of those big quilting um, frames and they've got like this they need so much excess to go around it so depending on whether you're using a hoop, a tension hoop, or um, one of those embroidery frames give yourself enough allowance so that uh, it's not caving in at wherever it is like it's not disappearing because sometimes you need to pull it taut so that everything is flat and there's no excess give. So um, trace out your fabric and then do another one of your sewing interfacing. And then you're going to lay those flat on a table um, and just do a kind of stitch just to secure it. So you want to do one along the edges and you want to do some along the middle in like a grid pattern and um, some people don't do this it depends um, if you're a beginner you could try it out that way you know for sure that nothing's going to be shifting around then again these people don't use any um, interfacing interfacing is if you're going to be using beads because they get really heavy actually I wouldn't even suggest using interfacing if you're doing uh, just embroidery if you're doing beading however I definitely recommend having an interfacing, a sewing interfacing, because um, the weight of those beads, it just needs extra support that your fabric alone may not have. Um, so that kind of stitch, um, 
it's kind of like half of a cross stitch so if you go look up for a video that has a cross stitch um, it wants you to do a whole bunch of diagonal ones and then it wants you to go back on it just do the first section and you'll be fine I hope that I helped you guys out and if you have any questions or requests feel free to put your uh, send off in the comments below and I'd be more than happy to help you. Bye!